Dave, I assume this is for you. Uh, can you elaborate on the story about you challenging Chuck and it turning into a 45 set dynamic day? Um, Vogelpool, I assume. Yeah, I don't know how much there is to elaborate on that. Um, we'll tell the story. Yeah, a long story. I guess it's not even a long story. Um, Chuck had just got out of a neck, having his broken neck. So he just got out of a neck brace. So Chuck wasn't really Chuck. He might have been training. How did he break his neck? Matt Demel broke it. Um, so it on was, accident? or No, nah, they were fucking around. Yeah, it was on accident. But they were fucking around and snapped his neck. But regardless Ouch. you know so he was out of the brace he'd been squatting a couple weeks and for some reason the monolift was not in the gym and it was on a friday louis let somebody borrow it for a meet chuck and i were not lifting in the meet i think everybody else was because it was only me chuck and louis that were in the gym at the time and we had to use the power rack which was fine you know it's not that big of a deal and it was dynamic day and the weight was i believe 405 and obviously box squats and I'm at my peak at this point in time. I mean, I'm probably the strongest at that point in time that I've ever been. Conditioning was on point. You know, I'm. this is easy for me. You know, it's I could have used, it was like week one of a four week wave. So it's no big deal. And you know, Chuck's just like struggling to get back. So after a couple sets, I start thinking, you know what, I might have this motherfucker. You know, it's. <laughs> You know, if I got any calculated shot, if I got any shot at this guy, I might have it, you know. And um, one of the things that we would do every now and again with the dynamic work is um, it was just kind of a way to to fuck with somebody is, is say we're squatting together. As soon as you let go of the bar, I'm grabbing the bar. So I'm right behind you. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you let go, you're like, what the fuck? That's like or, in fighting when you have a guy that's pressing you all the time. Yes, right? yes. And what I'm telling you is get the fuck out of my way. You're taking too long. All right, well, then you're going to get pissed. You're going to be like, okay, motherfucker. Then you're right behind me. Mm -hmm. And then the shit mm -hmm. starts, okay? So I start pressing Chuck on that. So I start grabbing it. As, and in a rack, it's worse because you got to step outside the rack. There's right. not as much room because of the, the rack cages and shit like that. So you're kind of like in each other's face. And, he catches on pretty quick what's going on. And so we pass eight sets to nine sets to 10 sets. And, you know, I'm like, okay, fucker, I'm, we're rolling. You know, we're going to go until somebody fucking quits. And you reach back, you grab the seatbelt, you put it on. You're like, like, here we go. Fucking shit ain't going to be me. You know, so I dial back because I already learned by this time when you get called out on shit like that, you stop. Uh, you stop squatting with compensatory acceleration you just start standing up with 405 so you squat so it doesn't look like you're loafing but you're not putting six eight hundred pounds of effort into it you're saving yourself because mm -hmm. see louis used to fucking fuck with us because he would do this shit to us and it was called lactic acid threshold training so he would do it to us but he would never tell us that he was only standing up with 315 so I'm like, Ugh! I'm like fucking dead. You know, after 10 sets, I can't breathe. I'm fucking side cramped. Mm -hmm. I'm shot. And he's like, fuck. And then Chuck is the one that told me, mm -hmm. you know, dude, look, you just stand up at 315. So then next time Louie fucking pulled this shit on me, we were running up to 20 some That's sets. Right. And then it was like, okay, look, none of us is going to quit here. You know, we're going to be done. Right. I kind of figured that was going to work with Chuck. Like, it didn't work out. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we got to 20 sets and, you know, it, it got to a part, a point where it's like, you know, this, this is fucking hard. I mean, this is, it's not really hard, but it's, I'm bored right now, but I'm already like 23 sets into this shit. He's got to stop soon. And then it would look like he was getting tired and I would, and, and when somebody looked like they started to get a little tired, that's when you get under the bar and you give a little more. It's like, okay, fucker, you're tired, watch this. Mm -hmm. And then you try to crush their mm -hmm. spirits. Well, <laughs> that doesn't work with fucking, Chuck has no soul. No. No, then he goes, and it's like, like oh, motherfucker. He's you're not hustling even each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like he's not even, yeah, it is like poker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, Except fuck. Except no money involved. It's like, this shit ain't going to end, clo you know, it ain't going to end now. You know, so it's, fuck, let's run another five sets and see what happens. And we get up to, it's... And Louis sitting there after like 20, shaking his head like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. But it doesn't stop us. You know, it just lets us keep going. Yeah. 
and we get in the 40s somewhere and um you know he looks chuck looks a little tired i sit down on the box and i'll do this thing where i sit down and i'll just sit there i'll do one set then i'll sit on the second one and i'll just sit there one two three and i'll say something like fuck you stand up like take that fucker you know and then you know he gets in there and just like two of them just kills him and it's like at that point my spears were fucking shot <laughs> i mean it was just and it, I, I looked to louie and he's he's like you guys are i forget what he said but i'm like man i don't i don't know if i can beat this guy and louie said he ain't gonna let you and at that point i'm like fuck you gotta fuck i mean there are some people that will literally die before he's won yeah and it's you know it's so i tapped out because i i tapped out because i realized i was not going to win we could have done another 10 15 20 physically i probably could have done another 20 sets mm -hmm. but i wasn't going to fucking win and at that point i realized i actually learned a very valuable lesson about power lifters there's power lifters who absolutely or just athletes in general there's athletes that love to win and athletes that fucking hate to lose yep. The ones that hate to lose are the ones you should fucking be the most afraid of. Mm -hmm. He hates to lose far more than he likes to win. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that when you're up against that, you better be ready for. In a sport like this, hate and anger will, will take it far. I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll get you hurt, too. I mean, there's a good example. But yeah, I mean, to me, I really didn't give a fuck if I won or lost. I just love fucking doing it. Yeah. You know, I never competition. Yeah, I never I never thought i would ever be the all-time best in my mm -hmm. weight class it's just by the time i got to west side i already had enough damage that it was improbable mm -hmm. you know then the more i saw people pass me by while i was there it became more improbable so what became more of my internal narrative is let's put my best lifts together because that's 200 pounds more than my total and let's hit that you know because that's probable and then, you know, I'd hit um, a lift or something like that. And it's like, okay, there was still more that was probable that I don't think I still, I still wouldn't have been an all-time world record holder, but I would have been way better than I was. You sure. know? So I was yeah. underestimating myself to a certain degree, but um, I wasn't going to win that battle. And he was fucking just training for like two weeks, you know, so thank God. And that was after the neck thing. Yeah, and it's, you know, you, you learn to kind of not train with him when he was at his peak. Because um, when he was at his peak, he was an asshole to train with, which was fine. You know, it's just you trained together, but you didn't do what he was doing because it would ruin your training. Um, because you get caught up. Because you're like, I got to match what he's doing. and But what you didn't understand is it was easy for him and it was hard for you. So 60% for him and 80% for you, you're fucked. Yeah. He didn't care. You know, meanwhile, I would try to fuck with him and even it like, look, throw a fucking plate on each side. Let's make this the same percent for each person. And he wouldn't do that because that's no fun. No. You know, but still. Well, that's too bad you couldn't elaborate on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> At 50 years old. Yeah. You know, I mean, Colonel Sanders did it and look what the fuck he did. Right. So, no, um, Donnie's he's bootstrapping the hell out of it. And he's, yeah. he's, but here's the thing everything he's come up with has been helpful. And yes. It's been helpful to more than to the majority of people, right? So.